statistics and excel perfect negative correlation get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds looking forward to a smooth soothing excel first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, it's a blank worksheet so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's take a look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be doing. We are once again thinking about correlations between different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relationship or correlation between them. If there is, then the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship? If there is, the next question would be, what's going to be the causing factor uh, in the relationship? So right now we're going to be focusing in on the negative correlation, a perfect negative correlation. Last time we looked at a perfect positive correlation. Just like with the perfect positive correlation, the perfect negative correlation is not something we often see in nature because we're usually looking at two variables that might be moving together but not be perfectly moving together. But we want to look at that perfect situation first. So some things where that will be the, the case are things such as you're, you're talking about the distance traveled versus the distance remaining. Obviously, if you're traveling somewhere and you're trying to get to an end location, as you get closer and closer to the location, the distance that you're traveling is going up and the distance that is remaining for you to get there is going to be going down in a negatively correlated relationship. So that's what we'll use with our example. To see it, we're gonna first create the distance traveled and this time we'll just use a random generator uh, to, to generate it instead of what we did last time with the positive correlation where we used a normal distribution random number generator. Uh, and then and notice that the random number generators will not give us really a difference between the correlations but we might be looking at data as we saw last time, which tends to con conform to a bell-shaped curve if we were measuring something in nature like a snake or something like that, which also could have a positive correlation to a second data set. And this time we're looking at something where if you were looking at a curve related to it or trying to approximate the line, because we're looking at just randomly generated data, it might conform more to a uniform distribution. But what we're looking, at is to see the the relationship between the distance traveled and the remaining distance. So we'll map that out, the distance traveled, and then we'll calculate the remaining distance. We're gonna imagine that our distance is 100 uh, miles, let's say, to get somewhere. So 100 minus whatever the distance traveled would be the distance remaining. And we'll imagine that we don't know that these two data sets have that relationship, right? So then our question would be, if I had these two data sets, could we see the relationship? Could we figure out the relationship or how can we analyze whether there is one? 
We'll take our mean, we'll take our standard deviation, we'll look at the uh, charts, noting that these charts would, will be going more towards a uniform distribution instead of a bell curve that we saw last time. And then we, we will uh, plot out our correlation calculation, both kind of working the math as well as using uh, Excel to spit it out automatically. And we're going to get to a negative one this time because it's negatively uh, correlated exactly. All right, let's go to the blank tab and let's do it. Enough talk, man. That's enough talk. Let's get down to the brass tacks. But I don't want the brass tacks are sharp. Don't step on them. Let's, let's take the whole sheet here. We're going to right click on the sheet and format the cells. And we're going to go to the currency and we're going to go to negative numbers and let's make this uh, no dollar sign and start out with no decimals. I'm gonna go to the home tab, font group, make the whole thing bold. You don't have to, but when you're on, when you're on camera with a screencast, you have to be bold. That's what you have to be bold. That's what all the greats say in the theater of screencast Excel. You must be bold. So it's like I'm in the great tradition of whatever. Here we go. Home tab. Uh, let's go to the alignment center of this thing. Let's wrap it. And let's go to the font group, black and white. And then let's just generate some random numbers between, uh, let's do it between one and 100. We'll just have the random numbers. So this is gonna be equal to, and I'm going to say then we'll have rand between rand between there's our formula we have seen in prior sections the bottom number is going to be we'll say uh should we go to zero let's go just go to let's go to zero comma and the top is going to be 100 so it's going to give us random numbers between zero and 100 we'll say okay i'm going to copy this one down now so i'm going to copy it down and let's go down to something that's not exactly a hundred. Let's like go to 200 something to 200 and uh, six. And it's gonna be 205 because there's a header. So it's, that'd be like 205 data points. Now the random number generator going back up is always gonna keep recalculating, it's keep reshuffling. So if I want it to be uh, solid, and not reshuffle now that I have some random numbers generated. I'm gonna copy the whole thing, select in the column, control C or right click and copy, put my cursor in C and right click and paste it one, two, three, don't you see? And there it is and now I can format it. Let's just copy the formatting for this one. Home tab, clipboard format and then paint that formatting right there with my paintbrush. I'll make a skinny B, skinny B. That's what they call me sometimes, some skinny B uh, over here, skinny B. All right, so then we're gonna say that the distance remaining, distance remaining, I'm gonna copy the formatting over here in, in, uh, in C, uh, home tab, format painter, put that into D. So if we're saying the total distance is 100 miles, the distance remaining is always gonna be 100 minus the distance traveled. So if I traveled 94 miles, the distance remaining is gonna be 100 minus 94, inverse relationship happening, double clicking on the fill handle to pull that down. So if I went 65 miles, the inverse relationship would be 35. If we went 14 miles, the inverse would be 86 and so on. So we can see that relationship, of course, because we made the data set. But if we had these two data sets and didn't know the relationship, then we might do our analysis here to see that they're perfectly negative correlated, which might give us some indication of what is happening with it if we didn't know what was happening, because we're imagining that we didn't actually just make it so that we could f make it do what we wanted. So we're gonna say, let's make a skinny E column. And let's say this is gonna be, let's copy the same this is going to be equal to the distance traveled and this will be equal to the distance remaining. Let's format paint it here, selecting these two home tab, clipboard, paint brush, make the same labels up top. All right, let's do our standard mean calculation. This is going to be equal to the aver average and of the distance traveled, control shift down 
and enter. So there's our average we normally do. Let's decimalize it to see if we can get a little bit more understanding about it. You gotta, you gotta think about it with a little bit. You're just covering the service surface and we need to get a little bit in depth understanding about the psychological, the psychology of the mean right there and get into the mean's head. This is gonna be the standard deviation S for the sample, remember it's dot S this time, we're working on the dot S's, not the dot P's. And this is gonna be for the distance traveled, control shift down, enter. So there's our standard D, let's decimalize it, home tab, number group, decimalize. And let's do the same thing for the, for the distance remaining equals, I could copy that over the, the other cell, but I'm gonna do it again just so that we can do it again. Average, just cause it's good times average tab picking up the distant remaining control shift down and enter decimalizing it home tab number group decimalize and then equals the standard deviation s for the sample as opposed to p for the population distance remaining control shift down and enter and decimalize home tab number group decimalizing it all right now we might we might then create a chart from it like we did before we might say well what does this thing look like if i just looked at them one at a time control shift down uh control backspace so we get back out to where we're looking insert tab let's just look at a histogram and see what that looks like let's make a histogram boom what is that doing what's that looking like and this is going to be a distance traveled okay and notice it should it's if we had a whole lot of data sets this will conform not to what we saw before which looked more like a bell curve but it's going to conform more to a uniform uh distribution because if we had a bunch of, of random numbers it's they should all be coming up somewhat evenly if we did it on to infinity right so even though we have a different kind of uh it's gravitating towards a, nor a, a different kind of standard distribution or a curve. If a line was to represent that, it would be the uniform distribution as opposed to like a bell curve. It's still gonna have the correlation here, which is gonna be a perfect negative correlation in this case between that data set and this data set, which will also have kind of a uniform distribution. So I'm gonna say control shift down and say insert and say let's go to the charts and make well before i do that let's go here and control shift or control backspace so i can put it where i want to put it and then insert charts make a histogram again and then this one is going to be for di, di okay now i can't see what i'm typing distance remaining Okay, so it also looks like somewhat of a uniform distribution. They're not exactly the same, but they both look like they're going to do this, th th that they might conform to a similar type of curve, which again would be an indication that there might be some, you know, relationship between them. If this one looked like a bell curve, you know, was more in the middle uh, and tapering off to the sides, and this one looked more like a uniform distribution, that might be an indication you're not going to find... Uh, a, a real relationship in terms of the correlations, for example. So we'll then say, okay, well, let's just copy this. I'm not going to make like a uniform distribution like we did last time with the bell curve. I'm just going to say, let's do the correlation calculation. So we'll say, here's our formula that we'll be working with. Now, also, before I do that, just note that we, we might then just plot this and say, if I select these two and say, control shift down and uh, control backspace, I might say, well, let's plot these together, which would be the next logical thing to do. And I can say, let's insert and we're going to go to the charts and we want to do this dots. So scatter plot. And it's like, wow, that's correlated. All right. It's a perfect negative correlation. It looks like now I'm going to do the same thing we did before and that I'm gonna remove the title because what I really wanna know is where the X and Y's are on the chart. So the, when we, whenever we do these charts, the one on the left is always gonna be the X. So I always think of X first. So if I was to say plus over here, add the axis titles, this, I can click on the axis title and say equals, 
and I can point to the first one, which is going to be the default X, and enter, and it'll do it with a formula. There it is in the formula bar up top. I can do it over here. Equals, and this is going to be the distance remaining, and enter. So there we have that one. Obviously, we don't really need a trend line because they all the dots are falling on a line. But if I later on will enter the trend lines here, so let's just practice doing that. And more options on the trend line. I'm going to go to the bucket, and I like to make the line like solid. Like the, I like things to be solid, man. It's a solid line. And then there we have it. Okay. And then so there we have it. Now, notice that normally we have the independent variable on the x, but we might not know which one is the independent variable. It might be useful to plot it the other way. So we have the distance remaining on the x. So you can see it either way. The relationship is still there either way. So so we so you could do it the other way. Let's just practice that. Now, the easiest way to do that would be to actually reverse the columns to have the distance remaining on the left. But you might have this in a larger data set or something like that, and you don't want to do that. So let's just do the same thing, and then we'll, then we'll, change, we'll change the relationship afterwards. So we'll select the data, insert, and then we're going to go into charts, scatter plot, and there it is. There's the same thing. But this time, deleting the title, adding the data labels, I want the axes. This time, the x-axis, I want it to be equal to the distance remaining. And I want this axis to be equal to the distance traveled. Now it's cur currently reversed. So we need so in order to flip them, I select the data chart design up top data uh, area or group, select the data. And then I'm going to go into my distance remaining edit it. And then here we have it, we're going to I'm going to leave the name alone x series, I want to change that it's currently picking up the one on the left, I want it to pick up the one on the right. So I'm going to delete it, put my cursor in the six control shift down, control backspace back up to the top, close it. And I think that's good. Now the second one, selecting it, delete it, be careful because it gets a little finicky Excel gets a little tricky here sometimes. And then this is going to be the one that we want on the Y, which is going to be uh, the one we want on the Y is going to be this one now. Control Shift down and Control Backspace. And there we have it. So now we've got, they're flipped. I think I hopefully I got them flipped. Okay, it looks quite similar because of the nature of our graph here. And so I'll say, okay. So you can see it's still negatively trending. Uh, so it looks, it looks very similar, but we flipped the axes. So it's not like, you might think at first that it would flip to be like, if you flip the axes, that it would flip to be like a perfectly positive correlated. No, it's still perfectly negatively correlated, a downward sloping line. Uh, and if I added my trend line, I could say more options and let's put a line in here. Let's make it a solid line and let's make it orange. Orange, orange, you glad that I added the trend line because I, I would have no idea how close that was to a line without the trend line. That's sour chasm because it is they all land on the line. And obviously, if we think about this, this makes sense because if we're looking at uh, the distance, the distance traveled as, or the distance remaining, as the distance remaining goes up, then the distance traveled is going down. You can look at it the other way as well. If you're looking at the distance traveled, as the distance traveled goes up, the distance remaining goes down, right? Distance travels goes up to 80, distance remaining goes down to 20. Distance traveled goes up to 100, distance remaining goes down to zero. So you have that negative, perfect negative relationship. All right, so now let's, let's, let's see this mathematically with our formula. So I'm gonna pull this to the side, get it, get it out of the way, get out of the way. We're done with you. We don't need you here. I don't wanna delete you though, because you're still, we might, you're still, you're still good, but uh, we'll put you over on the side here. All right, so then what we wanna do 
is let's make like a large eye over here. I'll pull this to the side and make a large eye. And then I'll squish these up into the area. So they're in there. And so they have their space. Everything has to have their space. Everything has, just like when you're eating, you have to put every, everything needs its own area. You can't just, you can't just squish everything together, you know? It has to, the plate is there to space out the stuff on it. Okay, so now we're gonna pick out, I'm gonna pick the same data. So we'll take this data, control shift down and copy it, right click and copy. And I'm just gonna put that same data over here and right, paste it. I think I could just paste it normal because it's just data, no, well, this one has a formula in it. Will that mess us up? No, that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Let's let's. I'm going to insert a column between the case. So I'm going to. I'm working my math here, which just means we're going to take the z-score of x, all the x's, and the z-score of all the y's, multiply them together, sum them up, and then divide by the count in minus one. And then so to do that, I'm going to do another column selecting column k right click and insert and i'm going to call this is the z the z of distance traveled traveled and this is going to be equal to the way we calculate our z brackets the 94 miles traveled in this case minus the mean which is 53 uh, 92 f4 on the keyboard making a dollar sign before the g and the two so it doesn't move down when i pull it down divided by the standard deviation for the sample which is over here and we're going to say f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the g and the three so it doesn't move down when i copy it down and enter let's decimalize it so we can recognize it home tab number group and decimalize couple decimals and then we'll just fill handle double click drag it down there it is muy b to the n bn as they say in espanol and so we're going to say this is the z distance remaining and home tab uh clipboard let's do the paintbrush and paintbrush it so that's good, a little wider. And so then we're gonna do our Z score, Z score, Z score for the distance remaining. This is gonna be equal to brackets, uh, the six, so that's six miles remaining, minus the mean, which is this one, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the H and the two, closing it up, divided by the standard deviation of a sample, and it's going to be f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the h and the three and enter and decimalize it home tab number group decimalize and then double click the fill handle to drop it down dropping it down like dropping a beat when i'm making my music video uh and i'm trying to trying to uh, put down the bass beat so then i can play like the guitars on it or something dropping dropping the bass Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. So then I'll multiply these two together. So now we can sum these two columns up and we've got the distance between each data point and the middle and uh, uh, divided by, so we've got the Z, right? We've got the Zs, I can sum them up, but now I need to multiply them together. So this is the Z, uh, I'm just gonna abbreviate the travel times asterisk the Z, remaining i'll just call it ream remaining and then we'll say home tab clipboard format paint to here boom and multiply it out this equals the z distance travel times the z distance remaining enter let's add some decimals home tab number decimalize and double click on the handle to drag it down fill it on down handle and we get the negative numbers given the nature of uh what we're looking at here all right so that so that is good so now let's make a skinny o column 
and then I'm going to say we'll do our correlation calculation. Correlation. We have all the tools necessary to get the job done. So now let's just take those tools, home tab, font group, uh, here, and do the job, black and white. So we're going to say then this is going to be the sum of the Z, the Z travel times the Z remaining, the sum of that column. So we'll say that's going to be equal to the sum and control shift down, enter. Let's de decimalize it, home tab, number group, decimalize. And so, so now we've done the whole summing the top bit, the top part. Now we just need to make the numerator. So the numerator, I'll just put a, a subtitle here, n minus one colon to indicate that I'm gonna do a little sub calculation in the middle. And by the way, turning these formulas into like, I would call this like a tax worksheet kind of format, just a, a, a worksheet is actually quite useful. So to, because then that lets you see all the steps that are being made in the, in the problem. And it could be useful in practice when you're, if you're trying to put some kind of worksheet together that you might use multiple times and run different things. But in any case, here's an, an N. The N is just the count. So I can count any of these that we want. I'm just gonna use our count formula equals count tab. And I'm just counting the rows. So I'll choose the first one, control shift down. It's just counting them. So how many rows were there? 205. You'll recall that 205 when we first started the practice problem and generated 205 uh, data points. So then less one, because that's what it has here in the numerator, minus one. So there's the one, and that's gonna give us the N minus one without the colon. Putting that in the outer column, this equals 205 minus one. Let's do some fancy indentations for the subcalculation. Selecting these three, home tab, uh, alignment, indent, and then I double indent in here. Home tab, alignment, and indent again. So that's our standard subcalculation colon, representing there's gonna be a subcalculation. We pull that into the center column, and then we indented, and then when we finished the calculation to get to what we had with the subtitle, we put it on the outside. So now we have the numerator and the denominator and the outer column, which is a standard tax return kind of format, which may kind of turn you off with the tax return format, but it's actually a good, a good like strategy or format when you're trying to work through practice problems, even though taxes are uh, not enjoyable for most people. So this is gonna be the R or uh, correlation. Maybe I should have put the R up first here, R correlation. And so we just divide that out because we got the numerator and the denominator, home tab, font group, underline, and let's just divide it out. Obviously 204 divided by the 204 is one, but now it's negative one, which means now it's perfectly negative cor negatively correlated. And so that's what we would have, that's what we expect. So I was like, okay, perfect negative correlation. That makes sense. Now let's do that same thing with the with the with with excel just telling us it's, it's negatively correlated so to do that i can go to the ins to the data to the analysis now if you don't have that analysis tool remember you just go to the file tab you go to the options you go to the add-ins you have the excel add-ins go to that and then add the analysis tool pack the super cool pack of tool so then here we are and if you don't have if you don't have the tool pack you are a tool i don't even know what I, anyways correlation here's the correlation we're going to say okay and we'll find this one and let's put this down and we'll say we're just going to take these two i'm going to i'm going to take the headers in control shift down in our data so we're, we're going to we have to have them side by the side you can see I'm going to say backspace. I think I've got the right data, so it's still summing that up. Yes. All right. And then I'm going to say, okay. 
and then labels checked off because I had the labels in there. So you have to have that if you included the labels when you summed it up or, or drew the location of where the thing is. Okay, that wasn't very well said, but I will leave it in. Okay, and then where the thing is when you did the other thing, let's put it here and say, okay, and then, okay. So there we have it. So then it tells us it's perfectly negative correlated. I'll format this. Let's make some uh, black and white, home tab, font group, black, white. Let's uh, center it uh, and wrap the text. Okay, so that looks good. And then of course, I'm just gonna do that last analysis tool. Let's, put, let's pull this underneath now. So we have room for our charts. Can nice go there nice and cozy like underneath. So they're they're like not too far away from everything else, and they feel like they're part they're part of everything that's going on. You know, they're not like out in the distance in the cold. Let's also then do the other data analysis, data analysis, and do that uh, description descriptive statistics just to practice with that because it's a cool tool. It's a cool tool. Let's go. Same thing, same set of data, selecting the data. And then I'm going to say, where do we want to put it? I'll tell you where to put it. Excel, you put it right there. That's where you put it. That's where it goes. That's why you put it there. Summary statistics, and then I'll do the confidence intervals, although we're not going to focus in on them now. I'll say, okay. So then, and then let's make this a little wider. Boom, and it gives you the the mean, the standard error, the median, the mode, standard deviation. And that, of course, can give you some uh, indications about the relationships between the data sets. But remember that this is kind of static data. So it does, it's not dynamic. So if you're, you know, you can't change it as easily. So it's, any case, let's do, let's just format our stuff now like we normally do. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. Control shift down. I'm going to make this blue. Home tab, font group, make it uh border blue. If you don't have that blue, by the way, it's in the more color. You don't have to do this blue, by the way. It's that blue right there. You can color it whatever color you think is fine. Home tab, font group. I like the blue. I've grown up with the blue. The blue has, has in, I find it, it has endeared my heart. And I, uh, so I stick with it. Home tab, border blue. But that's just me you know you can do whatever you want i do enjoy other colors as well home tab font group blue borders and then let's do this one i tend to like to use the other colors for other standardized areas see and so i have it all worked out in my my logic system in my mind which isn't always that logical it has a it has this plan of which colors are supposed to be where and uh uh so that's just so i just that's why but you don't have to follow that and here we go and then this one home tab font group and black and white color coding is not my strong suit it's not my strong suit that's why i use the same colors because then i don't have to think about it let's put some borders around that let's do a spell check on it if we would Check the spelling. Correlation. I can't. I can't spell that word. I can't spell it. It's a hard word to spell. That's why you have spell check though. So that's cool. No worries. All right. 